Welcome back to the greatest show on earth, Veteran Revivals. I'm Art, your veteran idiot. This is Scrappy, who's still in pieces, shambles, if you will. eBay did us one dirty. The dash I ordered from uh, somebody on eBay, they sent me a message and said that they couldn't reach the funds that I supplied through eBay and wanted to know if I would pay through a different platform to get the dash and so I quickly canceled that order and now we ain't got no dash so can't sit in here like this much longer I got other things that I need to do want to do and so we're gonna try and piece that thing back together and get it back in there for the meantime until I find a different dash so we're gonna do that first thing I'm gonna get that all back together so I can get all this ducting and everything else in there and get this project buttoned up and then I want to try and see if I can get this thing running and moving under its own power uh, having a running moving vehicle is a lot more beneficial to me uh, so we're going to try and get that thing running and moving and then see what we need to do what we can salvage what we can't salvage what we need to get rid of and where we're going to start with our project with that and start putting together a parts list and everything else so we'll do that as well today or at least give it a try a valiant effort. It's a little bit cooler today. It's only 102 out. It's manageable. Once you get down below the 110s, it seems to kind of be okay. It's not so bad. Uh, at some point, we need to get rid of this piece of garbage too. Not Earl. No. Earl's fine. That. That thing back there. Let's go ahead and try and get this dash in here. So let's let all the cats out of the cardboard box. It's been about a week since that time lapse you just watched. I went ahead and cut the video off. I was getting no ignition power. Harness wasn't working for the car itself. So I pulled the dash out, went through the whole harness, uh, rewrapped what I could, put the dash back in, still didn't work. Took the dash out, went through the whole harness again, came across the ignition switch had fallen apart and uh, so I replaced that replaced the ignition relay put the whole dash back in couldn't get the ducting for the driver's side vent on uh, I'll show you in a second it is all stuffed in there they have every single one of these three inch tubes stuffed into one area and um, I can't really see how vintage air could have made it any different um, so it's not on them necessarily but man there's no room underneath this dash. It's 
for anything at all. So I thought we were going to clear up some room taking out this old unit. Not enough for that ducting. Uh, so I had to take the dash out again to get the driver's side duct on. Put it all back in, stuffed it all in there. Uh, with all that being said and done, we are now a week, just about a week since that video. Hooked it all up, fired it up, and it blows. It blows, it doesn't blow super cold. I gotta get it actually charged. I just threw a can in to see if the pressure switch would come on and uh, everything works. <sighs> There's still a little bit of the dash to go back together. We'll skip over that. I'll put that together on my own some other time. Um, but right now, I really want to get that throttle body and that mass airflow cylinder and sensor on this car. Uh, thank you to Charlie again for that. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Also, while this entire process was going on, this little vacuum valve right down in here, this little feller, you got to take off the side that goes to the uh, evap canister and the whole heater air conditioning uh, unit from the factory out of there to get rid of the vacuum for it. So you have to cap that. But while I was capping that, I kind of nudged the other line that runs down with the evap or the fuel evap and all that other business. And it was kind of like moving around in the fender. So I started messing with it and pulling with it and it was not connected to anything. Wide open. I don't know if a little mouseketeer got on there and chewed it up. That's what it kind of looks like, but it wasn't going anywhere. So I capped that side and we'll figure this out later. Started it up. Wouldn't you know it, it um, idles beautifully. Um, it still has a little bit of surge under load, but it fired right up, no surging. Uh, still at a thousand RPM, so I'm gonna go through the entire process all over again once we get this MAF and that uh, throttle body, because I have to anyways, and set the base idle. I think this might have fixed, and if it has, holy shit, be so excited. I might cry right now in front of you guys, but I won't because a manly man and men don't cry in front of people. So let's go ahead and start yanking out this throttle body, this mass airflow sensor, and then fire this bad dog off the base idle and see if we can take it around the block, get some cool air blowing through our long hair. I'm excited. If this thing idles like it should, this is a drive every day smoke the tires off and embarrass your neighbor's car wife probably still won't ride in it that's okay though long neck ass cold beer never broke my heart and all you guys talking about their hose clamps on here i bought some hose clamps chill out i'm gonna fix it this thing is pretty much cemented on here so i'm fairly certain there was no unmetered air going through this because it's probably going to take the jaws of life to slide it off of there Who? Chiwali wally hoop chi bang bang. I honestly don't know what size millimeter these factory throttle bodies are. I knew at some point in my life, but I think I've flushed that information for some other information that might have been more important, maybe wife's birthday or anniversary or something like that. But I don't quite remember. I just know that this 70 millimeter is much larger. Much. And excited to see what it'll do for us i'm not sure it'll do anything for idle or anything else like that but definitely up uh, opens up some flow when you twist that butterfly <clears throat> all right let's see if we can get these rubber things off of this factory one probably not <clears throat> long neck ice cold beer never broke my heart oh yeah hmm 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 yeah mm-hmm yep Oh yeah. Oh, Diamond rings, football teams. Probably gonna reuse this TPS because it's brand new. Hook these grounds for the harness back up to something, something another. Uh, probably throw this new IAC on the other one as well because that one looks pretty gnar, but oh, got a little juice in there. Whoosh, nasty. Might end up putting a oil separator on this guy 
pulling a bunch of oil in there. We'll see. It's just a breather, you know? That's what they say, but there's a lot in there. She's nasty. An issue we might run into is we might need to get the 70 millimeter EGR spacer or find the one that came with this, waller it out to fit so that butterfly doesn't hang. I think that might be an issue for us. It might not be. I'll have to take a look. If anything, it needs to be probably ported just so the airflow is nice. I haven't put one of these on before. You and me together, first time. You've probably done it 755 times. First time upgrading the throttle body on this specific little guy here. So the blade is far enough back that it won't contact the manifold. I'm gonna see, I don't have my mic out, so we'll just look down the blade or inside the butterfly and see what the difference is in the manifold hole to this. It's just a backyard. Dang all this look through it type of way. Alrighty then. Yep, yep. Pretty good difference there. Mostly just the gasket though. Looks like the manifold itself is a larger diameter. Let's take a look at her again. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep. So I'm just gonna take a razor blade and we'll run it around the inside of this gasket here and just get it. Get it done, dude. Cut up right, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. He knows what I'm saying. Pretty sure everybody knows what I'm saying. Ah, right, then. Oh yeah, now we're nice and slick. Oh yeah, that's much more bueno. It could do with some milling around the top of the intake manifold, but for right now, I don't want to pull this whole manifold off. So we'll just see how she goes. It's not so much of a reduction or a disruption that I'm super worried about it. So if we were wrapping out 8,000 RPM, trying to pull 10 horsepower to get like 0 .10, 0 0.1 thousandths of a second off of our quarter mile time, then maybe, but it's like literally a millimeter or so uh, diameter difference just at the top of the intake manifold. And no, the answer to your question is I'm not going to porter it. I'm going to leave it alone for right now and call it a day. Take a win where I can get them is what I'm looking at. What I do with my nuts. Yeah, boy. Leave those a little loose because we're going to set the base idle. All right, let's unplug this IAC, unplug the bung on the distributor, get this mass airflow cleaned up and throw it on. See, just the evap, fuel evap canister is gone and all those plugs and everything. It's an, I'm telling you, a carburetor would have just got rid of all of this stuff, but that may have fixed it and we'll leave it alone. And I will forget everything I ever said about the A9L and all that other business, or it's still an issue. Well, why has it got the security torques on it? Dumb. I bought these Torx bits with the little hole in the center, the like security ones or whatever you want to call them, almost 20 years ago for the top on my Bronco. They worked great. I don't remember where I got it from, but I should have got all my tools from there. Probably like Vato Zone or something, but had them ever since. Never rounded out, never had an issue. Somehow never lost them. How does that happen? Phew! Gonna clean this one up, I'll tell you what, it's nasty. Run a bit of sandpaper down the center of that guy. Oh no! Oof. Got a little something living down in there. I'm out of there. Yeah, now it's gone. Whatever it was, it's evicted. See you later. See you never, bro. All right, let's buff out the inside of this real quick. Clean it up. Yeah, there's cobwebs hanging off of everything in this thing. Okie dokie. Slap her back on. Now this is a 19-pound uh, meter, so we won't have to mess with any of that. Allegedly. Oh, she's going to be tight, too. All right, let me get this figured out. All right, clearly it needs more juice. See what that gives her.
Mmm. It is acting like it is sucking air from somewhere. Let's give her another start. See if we can figure out where it's coming from. widened up let's see what we got that ain't it let's see what we got in the sensor see if we can dial it in a little bit more helps if i plug it in one eight someone was saying you got to drill a little hole through the butterfly just to get it you know good enough on some of these pull this guy off Throw the one that was on the throttle body on there. Got more of an adjustment. I don't think it's gonna run with this. Turned out that far, we'll see. Nope. Wonder if this math is bad. Be going back to stock. Swap out this other pro form that was on the factory one. It's either got a massive vacuum leak from something. We didn't do anything other than swap out the throttle body. I looked pretty close. I didn't see any cracks or anything like that. So I'm not sure exactly what is going on here. There's a whistle coming from this area, but again, that might be that ledge from the uh, diameter differences here. Let's try again. like that mass airflow. It's either there's something wrong with it. It says 19 pound on it. I don't think it'd be programmed for anything else, but did not like it. Let's get down to around 700, 750. Maybe we'll go with just like 800. 
Seems like it wants to surge a little bit there. Shut it off and set the TPS. Seven seven. Too much. Nine eight one zero. Oh, let's go back just a hair. Let's call it there. Ow! Plug all this business back in. I'm gonna disconnect the battery. Turn the headlights on. Let it sit. All right. Battery's reconnected. Let's run it for a couple minutes, let it figure out its stuff, and we'll shut it off, wait two minutes, start it up with all the accessories on for two minutes, shut it off. All right, here we go. Let it finger it out. Already sounds better. Still idling pretty high though. We'll see if the computer figures it out once we get done with all the load tests and everything else. Those Explorer injectors are pretty significantly louder than the, the Ford Mustang ones, which is kind of weird, but maybe just the style, the way it works. We were right at our time, but I didn't want it to run with the fans on and load. So when we turn it back on and have the AC and everything loaded on it, then it'll figure it out. So kick on the lights, fire up. Come on now. Doesn't like that. Come on. right around 850 900 which is significantly better than it was and I think it had a lot to do with that massive vacuum leak over in the corner here AC is blowing cool all right let's shut it off my right, friends that should do it for the base idle reset I'm going to clean all this stuff off we're going to take it for a drive, see how it does before we start putting all that dash and everything else in because I've already had it out 1500 times. I don't want to drive it, realize something's wrong and have to take it all back out again. So we're going to leave the interior taken apart, but we're going to take it for a cruise, see how the AC does, see how the idles uh, doing and see how the throttle body responds and everything else. So let's get this all cleaned up. If you reconnect the solenoid, unnecessary. Wasn't really that bad. 
gas, but it sounds good. Oh, the AC is just absolutely magnificent. It is. It'll be a lot colder once I get it vacuumed and actually pumped full of the right amount. It's just got about three quarters of a can in it right now. Um, and I don't want to run it too long without pulling all the moisture out of the system, but it's blowing nice and cold. The attitude of the car is really nice. When I push in the clutch though, it wants to surge a little bit, but I got a lot of load on it with the uh, fans and the AC and such like that. So we'll probably get it worked out. It'll just be a matter of dialing in the idle and TPS and stuff. So I'm not too worried about it, but it's drivable. It's actually drivable. When I push in the clutch, it doesn't jump up to 1800 RPM and just hang there. So it's, it's nice. And I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this drive a little bit. It drives really well. I gotta fine tune the idle in, as I figured. Um, it drives great. AC is blowing cold, need to just go get it charged. This was one hell of a journey. The kit is well worth it. Well worth the money for it. It is a pain to put in, but it's the car. It's not necessarily the kit itself. And it would be a lot easier if it was in a car that everything didn't fall apart in or connectors didn't break and everything else when you're trying to put it in so that is working against us in that instance but this kit is well worth it ac works perfect heat is hot hot it's really hot but it is 100 degrees out here so but um thank you again charlie for the throttle body and the mass airflow sensor wait a minute i just got a package i got to show you guys this is a bit of a special package. It comes from uh, a fella named Terry that reached out to me after my dad died. He said he wanted to do something special for his military service and all that business. So he put together this little memorial and sent it out to me. And I'm really excited to check it out. Um, so let's go ahead and dig in here. Let's see. Wanted to make sure it wasn't going to get damaged in packaging, so it's got all the 100 mile an hour tape on it. I said it's packed in foam too, so we might have to dig through that as well. Woo. Oh, it's got a charger or a power plug. It's like an ammo can. May have opened it up from the wrong end, but we'll see here. It's in here. It's nice and safe. I'll give them that. All right. Oh, Terry, man, oh man. This is awesome. Let me go ahead and uh, bring the camera over here. This is, this is awesome, I appreciate you, man. Looks like it plugs in, maybe there's flames in the background. Bring the camera over here, check it out. Check this thing out. US Army, it's got my dad's name, his nickname, date of birth and year of passing the wood in there background that is awesome man that is awesome to think that people i've never met ever in my life saw my grief and took the time to make something like this to memorialize a person that they've never met in their entire life just through a brotherhood a brotherhood of military is just it's there's no words to describe that type of person. Um, I appreciate you a lot, Terry. This is, this is awesome. This is good stuff. This is going to go up by the flag for sure. I am trying not to get emotional right now, but this is, this is awesome. You're a good man. I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and see what the, uh, the plug does. I think it's for uh, flames, artificial flames in the background. All right, let's plug this thing in, see what we got. Oh, dude, that is awesome. That is awesome. Solid work, my friend. Thank you, Terry. You are the man. I will forever appreciate this, and I'm sure he did it well as well. Um, thank you. 
Thank you guys for watching. Um, it's been a struggle over the last week or so. Uh, this definitely helps. It's good stuff. We're all done with that. I'm gonna put in the interior on my own at a snail's pace trying to fix everything, but I appreciate you guys and Terry, and I um, hope to see you on the next one. And as always, have fun. Check out the merch online, www.veteranrevivals.com.